In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're continuing with the um, new era and the divine wealth. This is part two. And uh, we're going to begin with a very, very important um, passage that Jesus uh, spoke to Louisa about in uh, 1919. Uh, and it, it explains why the church, why the world is going through what it's going through right now. So in uh, volume 12, January 29th, 1919. Jesus begins to speak to Louisa. My beloved daughter, Louisa, I, Jesus, want to let you, Louisa, know the order of my divine providence. So here, <clears throat> the reason Jesus is, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> the reason Jesus is speaking to Louisa is to let us uh, who are reading the book of heaven uh, know the order of the divine providence of God. He doesn't want, he's the word. Jesus is the word and he, he wants us to hear what he is telling mankind. Okay, so he says, every 2,000 years, I, God, have renewed the world. So from Adam to the flood was 2,000 years. <clears throat> from the flood to Jesus was 2,000 years. And from Jesus to today is 2,000 years, and we've entered the third millennium, or we've entered into the 7,000th year, okay? So every 2,000 years, I have renewed the world. In the first 2,000 years, I renewed it with a del deluge. So when you read Genesis 6, uh, it said the sons of God saw that the daughters of, of Adam were beautiful and had children with them. So what happened was that the human DNA was changed. It, there was an interbreeding at that point. And uh, Jesus said that uh, when he returns, it, it will be like the time of Noah, where they want to uh, uh, inter, what do you want to say, to destroy the human DNA and add onto it, making it a different than what God has planned. So what God planned in the beginning was to have Adam and Eve. And, and he said there was only one family that had a pure line that was pure to what? To the true life of Adam, the true life of Eve. And therefore, everything else had to be wiped off so God could start again what he had planned with Adam. So he says, um, in the first 2,000 years, I renewed the world with the deluge, getting rid of all that was not of God. In the second 2,000 years, he says, I renewed it with my coming upon earth when I manifested my holy humanity from which uh, as many fissures of my divinity showed forth. So when we, when we look at Jesus, the holy humanity of Jesus, we see these fissures, these, these beams, these little streams of light these little fissures, if you want to say, where we, we understand, we begin to understand the divinity of Jesus. But it's very, very few. So he says now the good ones and the very saints of the following 2,000 years since Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead have lived from the fruits of my holy humanity, but only in little drops, only a little bit. And they have enjoyed my divinity only a little bit. So what happens is, um, you, that's why there are so few saints. Uh, there are so few saints because um, the saints go through prayer, sacrifice, penance, conversion. And they spend their life focusing on the holy humanity of Jesus. Now, what's really amazing is that... Um, he says, now we are around the third 2,000th year. And he says, and there will be a third renewal. Okay, so why are we alive today? 
We are we have been pre predestined by God to be alive today. Why? So that the third renewal will happen. So first was the flood uh, at the at two thousand uh, four thousand years ago. Then it was the blood of Jesus washing the world clean at his crucifixion, death, and resurrection. And now fire from heaven is coming. And the fire from heaven we should not be afraid of because it's symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. The fire of God's love from the new Adam and the new Eve is coming to earth so that mankind can return back to the image and likeness of God. And then he says, this is the reason for the general confusion. It is nothing other than the preparation of the third renewal. So everything seems to be falling apart, but in reality, God's getting everything in order. He's getting everything in order within our own lives, in the, in, in the church, and in the world. So there has to be, he says, this gift of the divine will is so magnificent that the world has to be purified. The church has to be purified. Each individual soul has to be purified in order to receive this abundant gift that God is going to give to mankind. So he says, if in the second renewal, I manifested what my holy humanity did and suffered, that's what Jesus is, shows us, that's why we pray the Holy Rosary, to look at Jesus with the eyes of Mary, the love of Mary, to, to understand that uh, he, Jesus, has manifested his holy humanity, all that Jesus did and suffered, he said, very little of what my divinity was operating was shown. Why? It wasn't time. We have to first understand the holy humanity of Christ. This is something that's, that's essential. We have to begin to focus on this holy humanity of Jesus. And when the priest puts a drop of water in the chalice, the priest says, may we share in the divinity of Christ. But first... We have, to, we have to be fused with the holy humanity of Christ. So if we have anything separate from the holy humanity of Christ, we, we must go to purgatory. If we don't change it now, we have to go to purgatory for it to be uh, uh, cleansed of us. Okay, so once we embrace the holy humanity of Christ in its fullness, then we can begin to share in divinity. So God is working on us, and he's teaching us, he's leading us, he's guiding us closer to him. So he says, he says very, very clearly that um, little of a, what my divinity was known, uh, he says, now in this third renewal, after the earth will be purged, and a great part of the current generation destroyed, I, Jesus, will be even more generous with mankind, with creatures. And I, Jesus, will accomplish the renewal of this third renewal, this third purification, by manifesting what my divinity did with my holy, within my holy humanity. Okay, so that's what's coming right now. And, and this is why it's so essential to read and study and put into practice the truths that Jesus gave to Louisa in the, in the book of heaven. As we read, as we study, as we put this into practice, a new beginning is happening for each and every one of us. And little by little, this is the joy, little by little, he's teaching us. The, the more docile we are, the more submissive we are, uh, the more surrendered we are to Jesus and Mary, what happens is, what, what Jesus and Mary taught Louisa is then we are beginning to learn. We're beginning to learn this new way of living. And it's not what the saints have been taught. The saints have been taught how to do the will of God. What Jesus and Mary taught Louisa is how to live in the will of God. And that, that is the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve, which Louisa possesses. So our Lord has got great, great plans. He's given us the book of heaven. And he's saying, I'm going to explain uh, what, why I have done what I have done. And he says it very clearly right from the beginning. You're going to learn about my 
divine providence. What I had, what God has planned, what I, God, have planned for mankind. And it's not to continue to live like this with worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. It's to begin to live this abundant life of peace, joy, and happiness. It's to live the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So this is why God is, is, is teaching us little by little. And it's so amazing what our God is showing us. It is so magnificent what our God is teaching us. So he says this. He says, um, I will accomplish the renewal of the face of the earth, this third purification. He says, well, why will the large majority of humanity be gone? Because the large majority of humanity doesn't believe. And God has to give them what they want. You remember what he said, when I return, will I find any faith on the earth? And the way it's described, the wording in Greek, it's the answer is no. He, he answers that question by, how, by the question, will there be any faith on earth when I return? And, and Jesus says it will be very, very few. So what God is going to do what, is what he always does. He uses a remnant. Now, all the people of the earth, what God did, there was a remnant in, in Egypt of, of the people of God. And, and when they went into the desert and they complained for 40 days and for 40 nights, uh, their punishment was to wander in the desert for 40 years. And, and it's the same thing today. We have received the teachings, the dogma and doctrine of the Catholic faith. This is, this is very, very important. What God is giving to us is the fullness of faith. And, and when we question, when we complain, when we're negative, God says, fine. Now, let's just think about this. Everything has really changed worldwide since the 60s. Uh, everything has changed. Um, and what do we see? Uh, we see that those souls of the 60s who were uh, basically planning uh, where the church and where the world would go, there, those 40 years is over, okay? And, and what happened after the 40 years of wandering in the desert? Uh, they entered into the promised land, but only out of the entire time, uh, there was only two that entered into the promised land. Uh, there was only two until the 40 years were over. So what do we see? We see God has given this gift to, to Louisa, and the first one who will be able to possess this gift next to Louisa will be the Holy Father. We pray it was John Paul II. We pray it was Pope Benedict. We pray it is Francis. But we know that the second one who will possess this gift will be uh, the Holy Father. He will, he will promote this gift to the world. As John Paul II promoted a divine mercy to the world. And we've had divine mercy since, since the year 2000, basically in the church, celebrating every year the se second Sunday after Easter, the Sunday after Easter, which was the day that Louisa was born, the second Sunday, the, the Sunday after Easter. Uh, this, is what, this is what God is trying to get us awake to, what he has planned. So he says, he says, how I, Jesus, uh, uh, how, he says, my, my divine will acted in my holy will, the human will, how everything remained linked within me, Jesus, how I, Jesus, did and redid did everything with my mother, especially on Calvary, how each and every thought of the creature was redone by me and sealed with my divine, my divine will. So we're, we're going to now learn this, this abundant life that Jesus lived, that Mary lived. Not just, not just doing the will of God, but living in the will of God. So then there with a prayer, may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always, that we become divinely healed. And we pray that this prayer becomes God's command in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Uh, God bless you. And we'll talk to you later.